Welcome. Welcome back. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome back. Welcome. 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 Hey everybody, welcome back to the Anthony and Todd show. As always, I'm your host Trevor and I'm Vincent. And we're here today to discuss with you more albums. We're about a month into our new recording schedule. Feel like it's going pretty good so far. Uh Comment on any of our social media platforms or YouTube and tell us how we're doing unless you got something bad to say, in which case, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Well, I I have something I need to say. Do I have to respond to you in the social media section of our... Just say it to my face. I think I'm developing a rash. (laughs) (laughs) Just put it in our Twitter comments and we'll get back to you. Uh, Today we're going to be discussing three very exciting albums from earlier this year. First off, we got Cola Boy's debut album, Prosthetic Boombox. Next, we're talking about the latest Mad Lib effort, uh, Sound Ancestors, which is curated by fellow DJ Fortet. And finally, we're going to be closing out the episode with a French electropop album from Mid on Ed Banger Records. Very exciting stuff. I hope you find something that you like. And without further ado, the reviews. Go for it. Cola Boy. Prosthetic Boombox. In late 2020, Australian electronic group The Avalanches released their third album, We Will Always Love You, which included an amazing dance pop song called We Go On. Not only was it one of the best surprise tracks on the album, it also introduced the majority of the world to Cola Boy the musician and activist from Oxnard, California. From there, Cola Boy has been launched into a variety of different projects from working with the likes of MGMT, Juan Waters, Mid, and Benny Sings. He's also released his debut album, Prosthetic Boombox. Cola uses his newfound platform to highlight his ear for great music, as well as elevate his platform and perspective as a multiracial, disabled person living in a town where over 30,000 people are living in poverty. One of the most immediately noticeable and gripping things about Cola is his voice. It's nasally, but this is his natural voice, a result of having spina bifida at birth. I think his voice serves him well and adds an extra layer of uniqueness to his sound. Anytime I hear Cola on a track, there's no mistaking who he is. The opening track, Don't Forget Your Neighborhood, is a love letter to Cola City with some assistance from the Avalanches. Even though Cola's neighborhood isn't perfect, he still loves it and feels pride in the place he grew up. The Avalanches provide the perfect, upbeat, danceable backdrop for Cola to sing about standing up for the places you love and fighting back against tyranny. When bad things happen, sometimes we feel the urge to just run away, but Cola argues that we should stay and fight if we truly love something. It's kind of like a modern day, beach boys, be true to your school vibe, but with more activist undertones. The whole track is triumphant and unifying, calling for revolution in the most glimmering way possible. The next track, Mailbox, immediately brings to mind something from Sesame Street. It's so drenched in color and vibrancy as Cola sings about burning his junk mail and daydreaming to escape reality. He just dances effortlessly through these brassy horn sections, floating across the track like a dream sequence. I also really love Jay Gray's uh, narrator-like vocals, which really capture the feeling of being on a TV show or something. The escapism he sings about is a staple of every working class person's lives, dreaming of a better world as they endure the mundane task of everyday life. Song for the Mister continues the mailbox narrative, but shifts the tone. As Cola Boy sings about how he served presumably divorce papers, showcasing how heartbroken he is, however he's still hopeful he can live past his struggles and debts and win back his love. He lists off all different reasons why the notice is disturbing. Not being able to see his kids, not being able to eat, losing his love, realizing he's not a kid anymore. But he matches these depressing realisms with unmatched optimism, which in my opinion is the best part of the track. For as cheesy as some of the sentiment is, the strength Cola Boy finds on the hook seems natural. He's able to confidently stand in the face of uncertainty, which matches the attitude of a lot of this album. Cola Boy standing on his own and facing his struggles with optimism and creativity. Roses is a funky and saturated collab with Mid that showcases Mid's ability to create production that highlights infectious pop performances. We'll get more into detail about that later in the episode. The constant acoustic guitar makes the track flow extremely well being the boat that carries you down the river across the palette of warped synths and thick drums. Highlighted by Cola Boy's pitch vocals, which take the listener on a psychedelic journey. I like how all the elements blend together and create a lack of space. It feels like you're just floating in space in the fluorescent world that the song takes place in. You Can Do It might be one of the more obvious metaphors Cola offers up on Boombox, but it doesn't lose any of its potency. 
His first line reads, bullets flying on, but we keep dancing. And later on, he says, the moves we make in death, they'll still be dancing, bringing back to life forever. These haunting lyrics are delivered in such a lighthearted way that it's easy to miss what Cole is saying. But I directly compare these lines to the most important line in Kendrick Lamar's hit, Money Trees, where he says, Everybody gonna respect the shooter, but the one in front of the gun lives forever. This extremely disco-inspired track contrasts a funky bass line and electrifying guitars with the sounds of a crowd of people. Call me crazy, but the people sound distressed in the background, sounding more like a crime scene than a party. I Think You Can Do It is the perfect sister track to our opener, Don't Forget Your Neighborhood. Don't Forget is the call to action, and You Can Do It is the action. One of these winters will take me is a very separated moment for the rest of the lineup narratively. While it stylistically matches with the rest of the tracks, featuring ultra smooth guitars and epic background vocals following Cola Boy and the Hook, the lyrics are paranoid and tense. Cold Boy claims that eventually one of these winters will kill him, and he's terrified because he doesn't know what's on the other side. His lack of faith in God, and therefore the other side, makes death petrifying. Cold Boy's vocals feel kind of distant, which leads to this tense feeling that comes from the lyrics. Which is surprising because the rest of this album always has a silver lining to the narrative, and this track doesn't have that. Which in the end, I feel further fleshes out the character of Cold Boy, showing the extent to the limits he has, and the fears that linger with him. Prosthetic Boombox's closer is Kid Born in Space, a collaboration track with Andrew Van Wingarden of MGMT. On the track, Cola goes a little more personal with his lyrics as he sings about what he's had to overcome in his life as a disabled person of color. At the start of the track, he sings about how everywhere he went, people stared at him because of how he walked or talked. The track title says it all. He felt like an alien or some sort of spectacle for people to gawk at. People made fun of his voice or his looks, and he heard them, but he just kept going with his life and dreams. As Cole has gotten older and learned to coexist with his abilities, he's been able to find happiness, especially in being a musician. And it isn't like people have changed their ways and stopped talking or staring. He just chooses not to let it affect him, and he believes in the power of love instead. I used to see Prosthetic Boombox as just a collection of fun songs by a very talented artist, but in re-listening to it, I think I see it as more than that. It's an album about liberation and fighting for what you value. It's about hardship and triumph and the power of love over hate. It's equal parts protest album and uplifting music, a perfect balance of celebratory optimism while still reminding the listener to continue the good fight against the evil forces of our own everyday lives. Cola Boy truly is the everyman, offering up a continued positivity and fierce fighting spirit in his life of hardship that we should all strive for. Ouch. Mad Lib. Sound Ancestors. It doesn't take a music super fan to know that Mad Lib truly is one of the greatest and most prolific producers of all time. That's quite a big statement to start this out. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that in there. Over the years, that genius has taken the form of collaboration projects like Pinata and Bandana with Freddie Gibbs, or the illustrious Mad Villainy with MF Doom. This isn't even to mention his solo efforts like Shades of Blue, where Mad Lib samples from jazz record label giant Blue Note Records past catalog, or any Quasimodo project where Mad Lib dresses up in an ALF costume and raps. <laughs> Madeleine has had quite a career already, but we rarely see him release albums for the heck of it. His projects always fall into some sort of series like Beat Conducta, Rock Conducta, Mad Lib Medicine Show, or Mind Fusion. In these series, Mad Lib typically limits himself to only sampling from a single artist, style, genre, time period, country of origin, literally anything. In fact, it took fellow DJ Fortet to push Mad Lib to release this project, which didn't really have a central theme or limitation. Kieran Hebden, better known as Fortet, played curator to Mad Lib's music, editing, arranging, and mastering the whole album. He combined hundreds of pieces of tracks, loops, ideas, and experiments that Mad Lib sent him over the past couple of years into a definitive Mad Lib solo album. Every track on here feels like it's covered in a thick layer of dust, and I mean that in the best way possible. While Mad Lib's lack of a central sample source might seem like it would leave a project directionless, I think the title Sound Ancestors really speaks for itself. Across this whole project, Mad Lib seeks to tie together the sounds of the past with the future. Take the first teaser single, Road of the Lonely Ones, for example, which essentially is a remix of the ethics soul hit, Lost in the Lonely World. Truthfully, it might be one of the most traditional beats in the sense on the album, but at the end of the day, that's kind of Mad Lib's bread and butter. It's full of hip-hop sensibilities and fundamentals done like no other can. Not to mention, after listening to the source material of this song, Road of the Lonely One sounds like the most definitive and most fleshed out version of this soaring falsetto melody. This track is then followed up by Loose Goose, 
a futuristic sounding track that you might hear racing through the world of F-Zero. The instrumentation isn't necessarily all digital or futuristic, but the way that it's layered gives it a really driving and hectic feel. Madlib stacks these honking saxophones and kazoos on top of shimmering synths, bright neon-filled vocal samples, and possibly some nasal overtone singing. Following this, then, is the bass-filled Dirt Knock, which totally sounds like an area in Hollow Knight. Taking center stage here are these melancholic female vocals that sound like a lost Fuji's cut over a heavy bass line and samples of a guy saying, turn it up in the background. It's sad and hazy and earthy and kind of everything I'd want in a Mad Lib instrumental. The Call is the heaviest hitter on this track list for me. It's the second track in the listing because it's what people would expect to hear from a Mad Lib solo project. Fortet perfectly places it there to match expectations before moving down into new territory for Mad Lib. This track is a hip-hop legend making it look easy, splicing Terry Britton's bargain days and into a thick, bassy mess that never really makes sense but somehow feels natural. It feels like the vocals are spliced to insanity, perfectly allowing the vocals to be cut mid-word without the instrumental suffering from it, matched with these weird synth-pad undertones which add this strange uneasiness to the track, filling out the mix and making the track feel more populated. This style was carried on later with 2 for 2 for Dilla, which is a tribute to late and great Jay Dilla. The awkward and spontaneous cuts of vocals take you by surprise, as all these clips of vocals feel completely separate separated from the instrumental. Simple light bass and drums keep the rhythm as these vocals unsteadily pop out on the track. Then a thick low pass mix transitions you into the second half, a more soulful and grandiose version of the same type of splicing in the first half, but now with a more filled out instrumental. Like we are seeing examples of how to make the vocals feel natural in the mix. The added instrumentation takes away from the jarring splicing. I've heard of some other critics describe this album as career encompassing, much in the way that Donuts is to Jay Dilla, and while at first I thought that sounded kind of silly, but I realized that they might be right. By knocking down his own barriers and limitations of what kind of music can or can't be sampled, Madlib essentially creates an album pieced together from scraps of all of his other ideas. Dubaye, the closing track, could easily have been a track on Beat Conducta in Africa, or One for Cortabe, or Right Now, draws heavily from Brazilian jazz like Flight to Brazil did. He pays tribute to his good friend Dilla as well, as Vincent mentioned on 2 for 2 for Dilla, just as he did on his full project, A Tribute To. The New Normal has a distinct saw-like synth which has this nice electrical feedback kind of feel, creating a ghostly distortion which feels welcomed over the very natural jazz percussion. The track is just the idea playing out, just slight variations, nothing too intense. I like how much time is put forth to this idea, allowing us to see it out even though it isn't the most flashy or most dynamic track on here. Chino is a final little treat we get before the surprising closer. Chino is a very chill instrumental that is used as a small palate cleanser. It has relaxing keys and a light organ that carry us into a sense of comfort and nostalgia, fading out perfectly into what should be a perfect closer to the album. Then you check the track list and there's still one track left. Dumbaye. This track feels like it's constantly progressing forward, starting out initially with the child's vocals and insanely fast percussion. Then it gets built up by keys, but surprisingly it never gets too loud, keeping the volume to a minimum. This track is a flashy outro that is similar to the new normal in the sense that the idea is getting to be played out. The track didn't need more progression, it just needed time. A final moment where Kieran sits in awe of Mad Lib's talent, making it feel like you're the outsider who got sent hundreds of Mad Lib's secret sketches and demos. While Sound Ancestors might be career encompassing, and we see Madlib create something new with all that he's learned in the past, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's his best or most creative work. What's important to note, though, is that this album is far and above better than the majority of beat tapes that come out from literally any other artist. Especially the first half here feels huge and grandiose, just blaring your speakers out with layer after layer of excellent instrumentation and sample work. Madlib may have better and more creative projects in his back catalog, but it's important to see Sound Ancestors for what it really is. At the end of the day, it's a standalone project from Madlib, and while some fans might be disappointed, I think if it was released by anybody else, it would be at the top of end of your list. What I see personally is a pretty slept on beat tape from one of the most prolific producers out there. Yay! Mid, born a loser. French electronic musician and DJ Mid has managed to make the perfect summer album without ever mentioning summer, and in my opinion, that's a win. Mid is currently signed to Ed Banger Records, one of the most prominent labels in the French electropop scene. His latest album, Born a Loser, is chock full of tracks that make you just want to get up and lose yourself on the dance floor. From the album cover down to the soundscapes he presents, each track feels sun-bleached and ready to party.
Mitt's Born a Loser is best described as a good pop album. In the end, that's all that really matters. His hybrid of house and pop isn't revolutionary, he isn't reinventing the wheel with this release. The most distinctive thing this album does is manage to make nearly an hour pass by with hypnotic electro pop tracks. When this thing gets going, it's really spectacular. When you analyze each individual moment, you may wonder what separates it from the pack, but as a package deal, it's such a great curated mix of light, catchy music. At times this album reminds me of Fatboy Slim. Not in aesthetic, this album is far from a big beat album, but more in the lucidity that comes from the music and the trance it puts you in. The opener We Are The Light is a great example of this. This track could go on forever and I would never tire of it. The muddy percussion mix shines through the bright guitar and bass giving you an effervescent feeling up your spine. This track mostly feels like mid is just messing with the high and low pass knobs on a mixer, but that's kind of the charm of it. Just how it simply bubbles from one section to the next. In some sense, I think Born A Loser shares a lot of the same DNA as fellow French musicians Daft Punk. Many of Mid's tracks consist of some phrase being repeated over and over, typically the title of the track, with the instrumentation morphing and building in the background. I compare this to tracks off of Daft Punk's debut album Homework, specifically stuff like Around the World, Born a Loser, Always a Light, Now That We Found Love, We Found It. All these tracks employ that same structure, usually to pretty good results. The title track, Born a Loser, is the most house-based track on this album, letting the pop elements air out in the background, letting heavy percussion and uneasy synths take center stage. The synths are kind of nauseating, they have this energy to them that make you feel like you were kicked out of your equilibrium. Even though something's definitely off, do you find some weird sense of comfort in it? The collab track, Weather the Weather, featuring Juan Waters, is a melancholic electric pop track where the cold, sad guitar we've seen Juan over in the past are placed over this fragile drum roll. From there, Juan's vocals just loop over and over again until they fade out into oblivion, letting the thick, moody, audiovisual sunset play out in your head. The beauty of the guitars is highlighted by the coldness of the drums, slowly transitioning you from day to night. As guitars fade away and the drums linger for a moment, the remaining distortion of the track remains for a second. This is right reminiscent of the area around you slowly getting darker and you slowly losing sight of surroundings. Moving Men is just a stupid fun collaboration between Mac DeMarco and Mid. This track lyrically is just about Mid and Mac being moving men and placing boxes into a truck. There's an early 2000s indie pop feel that comes with the whistling on the hook. It sounded like it could easily came off Foster People's debut album. Mac's goofy lyrics and vocals add a charm to the simplicity of the instrumental, containing just creamy bass, flat drums, and an occasional guitar chord. This track is super peaceful and fun, just a light pop track to carry you as you make your journey across this album. What I particularly like about Moving Man, it's his ability to break up some of the monotony that comes with the nature of Electropop. I'm not sure I appreciated this track as a single, but as an album cut, this makes much more sense. Max vocals add an earthiness to the track where everything else feels so artificial, and the whistling melody gets stuck in my head all the time. Paired with the prior track, Call Me, which also adds some acoustic guitars to the mix, both of these tracks are a very welcome detour to the relentless electronic music. It's like stepping out of the club into the warm summer breeze for a quick break to get away from the heat of the crowd. We Found It is the seminal track on here in my opinion, containing probably one of the catchiest hooks of the year. Mitt's high-pitched vocals contrast really well with Bakar's low yelpy mix. You can hardly make Make out what Bakar is saying, it's like he's mumbling on the track. Totally similar to that of Kid Cudi's hums. It's just there as a rich atmosphere to stack on top of the airy synths, bringing close this beautiful album with a brisk outro that will be stuck in your head for days to come. One of those kind of weird side effects things that came with listening to Mid is realizing how different the club scenes of Europe are versus the United States. In the US, we might not really get this type of music or understand its appeal, but in Europe, I'm Pretty sure most of these tracks on Born a Loser would just be eaten up in the club. This is the perfect summertime album, full of bright synths and sharp drums that make you want to dance and enjoy the weather. In winter, re-listening to this has been a great mood booster as a window into warmer weather and longer hours of sunshine. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of The Anthony and Todd Show. I hope you found something that you're excited about. I hope you are looking forward to end-of-year list stuff coming up. It's super close. I can almost taste it. It tastes like peppermint. <laughs> Is that what all albums taste like? No, just Christmas time. <laughs> oh, Christmas time. That's the... Santa only <laughs> gives you gifts if you give him a good top 50 albums list. If you give him a bad one... Nothing. Cool. Nothing. <laughs> cool. <laughs> then it tastes like coal from Cole. albums. You only oh, get J. Cole. 
If you want to follow the Anthony and Todd show on social media, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Anthony and Todd. You can find us at youtube.com forward slash the Anthony and Todd show. You can find me on Twitter at the Vincent Shirt. You can find Trevor on Twitter at Alistair McCallis. And I have a new album out, Layer Effects, Songs to Inspire Creativity, which you can find right now on Tidal, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and Spotify. Layer Effects, Songs to Get Jiggy with it, too. <laughs> <laughs> gonna love that stand until next time guys i've been vincent i'm trevor (laughs) and see you boyos bye everybody goodbye 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 thank you goodbye